Hello, and thank you so much for signing up for my Django 2 course. My name is Nick Walter, and it's an honor to be your instructor. I know there's lots of different ways to go learn Django out there. There's blogs, websites, YouTube videos, books, uh, but the fact that you chose me in this course means a lot, and I can't wait to show you the magic that is Django. Uh, I've used lots of other web frameworks before, and I've honestly fallen in love with Django. I think it's so uh, simple the way that it all works. I just can't wait to show you the magic. Now throughout this course I'm going to be uh, down in the bottom right corner so let me go ahead and put myself there now. Yep. There we go. Uh, just think of me as your little uh, Django friend down here cheering you on making sure that you're learning all of this great stuff. So uh, I've taken lots of online courses and I hate it when the first video is just this long drawn out thing where they don't really teach you anything. So I'm just gonna get to the point very quickly. I wanna share an overview of this course so that you can decide, am I gonna attack this course just straightforward section by section or do I wanna jump around a bit? Uh, so here is the course outline. First, we're gonna be doing something called the Python Refresher. So if you know Python pretty well, uh, maybe you use it every day, whatever, you can just completely skip this section. Uh, we need to know Python, at least the fundamentals, in order to make Django websites. Uh, and so if you're someone who, it's been a while since you've used Python, or maybe you know some other programming languages, but you don't really know about Python, uh, I'm gonna get you up to speed. I basically teach you a concept in Python. We have a quick little coding challenge to make sure you've really got it and then we move on to the next one so again maybe you take a few of those you realize yeah I kind of already know this stuff you can just skip this section then we're gonna move on to making our very first website in this course we're gonna be making three complete websites and this is the very first one so it's going to be a word counter and the basic idea with this website is that someone can enter in some text on the home page, hit a count button, and then our Django website is going to analyze that text, count it word by word and say, hey, the word the showed up 13 times and the word and showed up eight times. It's gonna count them and show them from the most frequently used all the way down to the least. So the basic idea behind this project is I want you to know how Django works. You're going to see the structure of what a Django project looks like. Uh, you're going to learn how to test it locally on your computer. Just sort of get your feet wet kind of a project. And you could even use it to analyze some things like the Gettysburg Address or the latest Taylor Swift lyrics and see who it is she's really angry at this time. So from there uh, we're going to be moving on to a section about Git. And if you already know about Git you can just gloss through this section, don't even worry about it. But for those who don't know, this will be a quick section teaching you how to use Git. And Git is basically a way to save and organize our code. We're gonna be using it throughout the course, so I just wanna make sure that you're up to speed there. Then we're gonna move on to making our second website, and this is going to be a portfolio website. So the idea behind this is it's gonna be a page where you can show uh, projects that you've worked on before. There's also gonna be a blog included so that you can share uh, thoughts every once in a while and people can access that information. You're also gonna be hosting your resume on there. So it's sort of a, you know, this is me out on the internet. I'm sure you've seen lots of developers with websites like this. So the big things that we're gonna be learning about here is one, how Django works with databases. We're gonna be setting up a Postgres database and be talking about how do we make models, how do we save those in and fetch them back out. Uh, we're also gonna be learning about how to work with static and media files. Uh, that should be great. So really this website is sort of digging deeper into Django and the first one just sort of getting you the basics but now we're really learning some awesome functional things. Uh, from there we're going to be taking this portfolio website that you make and actually uploading it to the internet so you can share yourself uh, with the world and this is a really fun section for me because whenever you make one of these Django projects it's really not anything until it's out and people can use it right like I want you to be able to put your work out for everyone to see whether it's your family or friends or whether you're trying to make money from it uh, putting your stuff on the internet is absolutely essential so from there, we're gonna move on to the third website, which is going to be a product hunt clone. So in this one, uh, we're gonna be really focusing on the nitty gritty details behind Django, like what 
things can we do to make the experience that much better for the end user who are using our websites. We're going to be learning about the whole authentication system, which makes it so that our website can have a login. People can sign up for things, log back out. Uh, whenever they you know, submit something to our product hunt page, it will be associated with that user. We're going to be learning all of that. This is the biggest project that we're going to be making, but it's also the most satisfying. Uh, from there, I have a section about what's new in Django 2.0. So there was a big shift when we moved from Django 1.11 up to 2.0 or any of the previous versions from there. And so if you're coming from one of those previous versions and you want to know, hey, what's new? What things should I be looking for? This section's for you. I've also got included in there uh, me moving one of my 1.10 projects to a 2.0 project and so if that's your situation i think you'll really appreciate that so maybe in your situation that's going to be the one that you want to jump to immediately then lastly i'll have a bonus section where you can get my other courses at a discount but you can check that on your own time so the keys to the course i just have four things for you here so number one ask questions there's no such thing as a dumb question in this course i'm a self-taught developer i many a time have been completely confused by something looking up on google trying to find something stack overflow doesn't really make sense to me and it's like i just need some help that's what i'm here for that's what the other students are here for if you've got a question please post it uh, i'm sure i can help you maybe you go to ask a question you see someone else has already asked it and there's an answer there uh, do not be afraid to ask a question uh, the next one that sort of goes hand in hand with that is be willing to help others uh, if you see someone post a question and you know the answer it Go ahead and jump in and help them out with that. I think as you teach others, you really cement your learning. I know personally that's true for me, and I think you'll experience the same thing yourself. Uh, next, uh, I want you to not be a robot in this course. I know, again, because I've taken many online courses, it's sort of easy to follow in this uh, monkey see, monkey do situation where I just type word for word what the instructor does, and I never deviate. But the real learning is going to take place when you sort of step aside for a second, hit that pause button and say, well, I just learned how to add buttons, but I wonder what happens if I try and make this button a little bit longer, or maybe change the color on that button. Whatever it is that you do, I really want you to experiment because when you sort of go and draw outside of the lines for a second, I think you'll really learn some new things and it's gonna be that much better for you. Then lastly is I would really appreciate your feedback. Uh, throughout taking this course, you're probably gonna get a little pop-up that says, hey, what do you think of this course? Give it a rating, all that. Uh, I would love to know what you think. The uh, feedback from you is absolutely essential for me as an instructor. So one quick request is uh, if that review for saying, hey, provide some feedback for this course comes a little bit too soon and you're not ready to leave, feedback just hit that I'm not ready yet button I've had some students who say oh I'm not ready I'll just do three stars for now and then when I finish I'll give my feedback but sometimes they never come back to leave that feedback and then it just stays as a three star review so uh, that's all I've got for you let's go ahead and move straight into the Python refresher <laughs> 